Come on, Barack, don't put words in my mouth. All I said was that your grandfather should go back to his home and find himself a nice woman there. No, you didn't. Your exact words were Onyango should find himself a black instead of trying to defile a civilized woman. Sure, take any sentence out of a long conversation and it's gonna sound a little bad. A little bad? That's the kind of stuff you'd expect from a man dressed as a ghost before he has an unprompted barbecue on your lawn. Whatever, just grab some cinnamon bread twists and chill out. Fine, but you're coming to that racial sensitivity seminar next week. We'll see, I might be sick that day. Okay, Joe, now that Barack is done making a mountain out of a molehill, can you continue your story? Sure thing. So Reginald Todford III had fallen hook, line, and sinker for my spy story. With his money and influence firmly on my side. Seriously, Barack, I thought we agreed cell phones off during sleepovers. Yeah, sorry, let me just take this real quick. Unbelievable. You're on the horn with Barack, what can I do you for? Jesus Christ. Oh, Barry O, I'm so glad you picked up. Is that you, Todd? What's happening, my main man? I'm your main man. Is that code for, like, boyfriend? I thought you already had a husband. At least, that's what the Trumpster always said. Donald, why would you say that to Todd? You know he believes everything you tell him. Tell Todd what? Barack, do you not know how phones work? Joe and I can't hear the other end of the conversation. This is like preschool stuff. Whatever. Uh, just forget that main man thing, Todd. So why are you calling? I'm here with Bella, Ellie, and Josh, and I was trying to explain to them why Rosa Parks couldn't just move seats, but I forgot the reason. Is Professor Biden there? Tell him I said hi. Oh, uh, sure, Joe, Bella says hi. Who the fuck is Bella? Did he say anything back? You know, Todd, this is perfect timing. Joe is telling us a story, and I'm dying to fact check him on a few things. For one, do you know if you had any ancestors aboard the Titanic? Oh, I don't know. My family history was kept in our Bible, and unfortunately it was eaten a few years back by a large rat. Well, judging by your age, it would have been your great-grandfather, or maybe great-great-grandfather. Hmm, I don't know. I've only ever heard bits and pieces about them because my grandfather went crazy on account of the rabies given to him by a different, but equally nefarious, large rat. I know I can't hear what he's saying, but based on your facial expressions, I'm gonna take a shot in the dark that he's talking about large rats. Tell him that his family needs to start investing in glue traps or something. Okay, Todd, how about we do this? I'm gonna put you on speakerphone and you can listen to Joe's story with us. If anything seems familiar, just chime in. Sounds good to me. Wow, it's gonna be like we're back in class with Professor Biden. Okay, Joe, Todd and your former students are on speakerphone. Continue with your story. I thought you'd never ask, Barack. Let me give a quick recap for our newcomers. The year was 1912, and while on the run from authorities for something that was totally not a big deal and people should have just been chill about, I took the role of valet for American millionaire, Reginald Todford III, in order to join him on the Titanic. Not long after boarding, we met Onyango Obama and Frederick Trump, two newly minted partners in crime out to get Onyango some clam from a white woman, while also hiding Frederick's stowaway status from Captain Smith. My first night aboard the ship was great, until I was ambushed in the first-class dining room by the man who was after me and a waitress he roped into helping him. Reginald confronted me about the man and I was forced into pretending I was a spy working against the Germans. Unfortunately, I had no idea the worst was yet to come as the captain had us heading straight into an ice field where our ship of dreams would meet its demise. Oh, I do hope we get to New York soon. I agree, there's so much I wish to see. But it's only the 14th, and my father says we won't arrive until the 17th at the earliest. Hey, Joe, wait up. Barack, what the fuck are you doing? This is clearly a setup for some long-awaited girl-on-girl action. I'm already at half chub. Don't blue ball me here. Donald, I'm uh, pretty sure that's not what's about to happen. What's up, Barack? I'm just curious about what one of the girls said. She said it was the 14th, but when we last left off, it was the morning of the 12th. What happened in those two days? Nothing all that special. Reginald played along with my spy narrative, helping us get a new room under the alias, Joe Joson. After that, we mostly just kept to ourselves, trying to avoid being discovered by Robert and Lila. Oh, come on, something interesting must have happened. What are you implying, Barack? Are you trying to say that you think Reginald and I jerked off together in the Turkish bath? That's ridiculous. How did the thought ever enter your mind? I'm not great at reading emotions, but I have a feeling that Sleepy Joe is being defensive. 
Me? Defensive? That's crazy talk, Todd. Now let's get back to the story. Good morning, ladies. How do you do? Very well, 7th Officer Donaldson. You know who I am? Of course. You have become quite a favorite among the ladies. How could they not talk about the handsome officer who goes out of his way to ingratiate himself with his female passengers? Damn, I guess I have been approaching a lot of women lately, but it's not what you think, I promise. Don't you worry, Officer Donaldson. We don't believe those nasty rumors. Nasty rumors? Like what, if you don't mind me asking? There's no need to concern yourself with them, Officer Donaldson. Well, that's good, and it's important to keep it in mind when I say what I'm about to say. What would that be? Well, I wanted to inquire if you ladies would. Uh, I really haven't nailed down the wording, but uh, there's a guy I know, and he's pretty cool, all things considered. And personally, if I was a Nancy boy or a fairy or something, I'd probably be hot to trot with him. What the fuck am I saying anyway? I have it on good authority that this individual is holding a longer than normal pack of lifesavers in his britches, and he's eager to put a few in a woman. Fuck me, that came out wrong. What I meant to say was my friend wants to put his penis in you. Nope, that wasn't it. Good God, Charlotte, the rumors were right. He's a pervert. Let's go before he tries to do unspeakable things to us. No, ladies, come back. You have the wrong idea. I very clearly said it was my friend who wanted to do unspeakable things to you. Jesus Christ, Trump, that was hard to watch. Well, it's not my fault. I don't know how to get women to commit miscegenation. Maybe not, but you have, like, no skill with women, do you? Shut up, Onyango. I have plenty of skill with women. I'll have you know that my wife is a solid nine in Bavaria, and we have three kids, so you do the math there. Damn, I just wish this world wasn't so racist. I'm sure I could get the women lining up around the block for me if talking to them wasn't a 50-50 shot that I'd end up being used for target practice. Sure are full of yourself, aren't you? How many black women have you had? 50, 100? 50? I'm not looking to get the clap like you. All right, then 10 maybe? 10, that's a rather high number. It's fewer than 10? I mean, a little. I'm only 17, after all. Onyango, don't tell me. Are you a virgin? A virgin? No way. I mean, I'm African, after all. We lose that shit at, like, 7. But the truth is, I've only had one serious girlfriend, and she just dumped me. So there you have it. That's why I want to bet a white woman. Pretty embarrassing, huh? Of course not, Onyango. Wanting to do some pumping to get over some dumb girl who thought she was better than you is like classic guy stuff. You should have just said that from the beginning. Now I actually want to help you. Really? You're not messing with me? No, this type of thing is sacred between men. I wish there was like a term for it, like lad code, but less gay. You know, I think I saw some cute girls by the front of the ship. Let's head over there. Okay, let's do it, Trump. So, quick question. Did your ex-girlfriend have one of those slanting faces your people sometimes have? Reginald sure has been gone a long time. Has he been captured? Or maybe he's betrayed me. That's probably it. I knew I shouldn't have ever trusted him. His charming smile was all a facade to cover the great evil in his soul. If he doesn't get back here in the next 60 seconds, I'll kill him, beat him down with the nearest lamp or vase. It's the only rational decision. Dear me, I'm sorry that took so long, Mr. Joseph. Oh, you're back? Wow, you're lucky you came when you did. I thought you betrayed me and I was already planning the best part of the ship to dump your body from. What was that, Mr. Joseph? Oh, never mind. So what took you so long? Those low-class louts in the kitchen tried to give me caviar from a non-albino beluga sturgeon, so I had to give them a firm talking to about how important I am. It may have taken longer than I expected. Sheesh. You rich folks really expect the moon, don't you? I, on the other hand, am fine eating out of a dumpster. In fact, I prefer it sometimes. That must be a spy thing. Perhaps I should give it a try. It's better than you'd think. So did you grab me anything? Oh no, my dear Mr. Joseph. The dust-up involving the caviar caused me to completely forget. I'm deeply sorry. Eh, it's fine. I'm still pretty filled up on ice cream from last night. I couldn't get enough of that new chocolate chip flavor they just invented. Well, we can always ring the steward and have him bring us something. No, no room service. That's why I've been sending you down to the kitchen to get our food in person. We have no idea how far that Bobby is willing to go. He may have snuck his way into a job on the waitstaff or something. The Bobby? I thought he was a German spy. Oh yeah, he's whatever I told you he was first. He's just disguising himself as a Bobby or something. That's so exciting. He truly is a nefarious spy out to get you. Yep, I live a very exciting life. Now crack open that caviar. I think I'll take a spoonful. 
God damn that fucking Joe Biden. Jeez, Robert, take it easy. How in the fuck am I supposed to take it easy when that bastard spawn of Lucifer and Beelzebub keeps outwitting us at every turn? I missed him in Queenstown. Then we got to the dining room right after he'd bolted. And now we've spent the last two days going up and down first class, trying to find his room. And when we finally did, it was empty. He'd even cleared out the little bars of soap. To be honest with you, Robert, I think this whole thing is a lost cause. What do you mean? Well, maybe he jumped over figuring a watery grave was better than an earthly one, especially if it had only come after the end of a short rope. I'd say we give up this goose chase and enjoy what's left of the crossing, considering the fact we're probably both out of jobs when we get back to the continent. No, Lila, you don't know this man. He's too full of himself to take the easy way out. He's still on this ship. I can smell him. I just wish my nose was a little more precise. All right. If you're going to be all insistent on it, then at least we need to come up with a new plan, because you're having us run willy-nilly ain't doing a blasted thing. What do you suggest? Seems that our best course of action is to utilise the relationships we've formed board the ship. After all, that's how we figured out his name in the first place. Oh, I think I see where you're going. We lure his high society friends like that buttholeless Molly Brown into some sort of trap. Then we threaten to kill them if he doesn't give himself up. Do you really think it'd work, though? He's probably too heartless to surrender himself to save another. Jesus, Robert, you'd really execute people just to arrest one man. Aren't police officers supposed to protect people? That point is highly debatable. Anyway, no, that's not what I'm saying. Think of the people we've met on the ship, of them who do you think might have a good idea of where a couple of passengers might be. The janitor who kept complaining about people jerking off in the Turkish bath? Not a very smart one, are you? No, of course not. I'm talking about that officer from the dining room, you know. What's his name? Murdoch. That's it. Ah, uh, okay, you're right. It's all coming together. We threaten to execute him. Then- Fecking L, will you stop it with that already? Just come along. I'll explain it to you on the way. Cheer up, friend Bohayan. We're on a ship of dreams after all. I know I should, Haresh. I'm just annoyed that we got arrested is all. At least we got to grab a bunch of food from rich people's plates before we did. That's true. Who knew that lamb with mint sauce was actually pretty good? I mean, it sounds like shit. My favorite was the French ice cream. Next time I'm gonna try to eat it with a spoon instead of my hands. What's up first officer Murdoch? Did you bring us some more of that lamb? I know it's a long shot, but if you did, I'd literally be your slave and I think that's still legal cause I'm not black. You two sure are a lively pair for having spent the last few days in the brig. I mean compared to our cabin, this is pretty good. I'm more concerned about when you're gonna let us out of here. I have places to be once we arrive. Whatever you're referring to, we'll have to wait. Once we arrive, you both are going to be formally arrested and charged with theft. Arrested? I don't believe it. Please say you're just making one of your famous jokes, friend Murdoch. It's no joke. The White Star Line takes theft very seriously. You can't do this. I have to get back to Korea as soon as possible. My son has gotten himself mixed up in some revolutionary business that I have to put a stop to. What? If you're trying to get back to Korea, why are you on a boat to America? Me and friend Bohain are huge fans of the Boston Red Sox and no way are we gonna miss the opening of Fenway Park. That's true, but honest to God, the second the game ends, I'll be going back to Korea to deal with my son. Even if I did believe you, it'd make no difference whatsoever. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but you won't be let go anytime soon. Good afternoon, Mr. Bride. Good afternoon, Captain. If you don't mind, I just have to finish transmitting this message. Take your time, Mr. Bride. I know how hard you boys have to work down here. What can I do for you, Captain? I was simply coming down to check on things. Ah, uh, I see. Well, it's good that you did. It saves someone the time having to run these up. Hmm? And what would this be? Oh. Two more iceberg warnings, huh? That's correct, Captain. The RMS Cardonia reports bergs and growlers and field ice, while the RMS Baltic reported a Greek ship passed both icebergs and large quantities of field ice. Very well. You can take these back, Mr. Bride. Are you not concerned, Captain? 
Not very. Far be it from me to stand in the way of progress, as they call it, but ocean liners have been crossing the Atlantic for 80 years. If the Danish are to be trusted, something I personally wouldn't suggest. Humans crossed it a thousand years ago with nothing but a few pieces of wood and a dream. The young people tell us that these advanced warnings your radios allow us to receive will make that crossing so much safer. But I think that the best protection a boat has from icebergs are the four eyes we keep stationed up in the crow's nest. But Captain, these warnings allow you to prevent disaster before we'd even get close enough to see those icebergs. We That's could... all fine, Mr. Bride, but I know what I'm doing. Yes, of course, Captain. Please forgive me. That's all right, Mr. Bride. Now, I'd say it's time we both get back to work. Good day. Good day, Captain. Hey, don't knock it until you try it. I mean, how often are you really going to be looking at her teeth? That's 7th Officer Donaldson, if I'm not mistaken. I'd like to have a word with him. Hey, Sleepy Joe, I have a question. Ask away, Todd, unless it's about the Turkish bath. No, it's not that. But your constantly bringing it up is making me curious. What I wanted to ask is this is a story about your time aboard the Titanic, right? Oof, Todd's about to have a woman moment, isn't he? That's correct, Todd. Well, it seems like all these other people are doing fun things. But you've just been sitting in your room this whole time. Oh, trust me, Todd, I was doing something very important. What was it? I can't say, but it was very cool, and you'll find out what it was soon enough. I mean, can't you even give me a little hint? Todd, I think we can all agree I'm a master storyteller, and I know what needs to be told and when. Come on, Joe. You tell a good story, but you're no master. Half of your stories are wildly incoherent and feature loads of extraneous detail. Like your story about the fall of Rome, when you spend at least 30 minutes talking about some irrelevant textile merchant. The textile merchant's daughter had really cute dimples. How's that irrelevant? To be honest, I think I'm siding with Todd on this one, especially considering the time skip you threw in. I'm gonna assume that every minute you don't account for was probably spent bottomless in the Turkish bath. I can't believe all of you. Fine, I'll jump back to me for a little, but don't come crawling to me when I ruin the greatest reveal of the story. Mr. Joseph, I'm back. Did you do what I asked? Yes, sir. But can I ask what it's for? Important spy stuff. It's on a need-to-know basis. Now go back out and get me another saw. I'm wearing this one down like crazy. Trump, you must be crazy. I couldn't be with a girl with nasty-ass teeth. What if I want her to go down under? Point taken. Well, if good teeth are a prerequisite, that takes most English women out of the equation. Wait, that's all you're gonna tell? What was that? Joe, that was like 30 seconds, and why on earth did you have a saw? Fuck me. I know what I'm doing. Now can all of you please shut the fuck up? I try to tell my friends a nice story, and they keep nitpicking at every turn. How many people do you know who personally witnessed the sinking of the Titanic? One. That's how many, because I'm the only one who's still alive. I mean, two if you count Haresh, but who knows where he might be nowadays. The point is, this is a finely crafted narrative. I worked very hard on it, and you all need to keep the editorial commentary to yourselves. Oh, uh, okay, sorry, Joe. Keep going. I was going to, Barack. Now, where was I? First class may be a bust. I'd say we head down to steerage. They're not quite as clean, but they have fewer moral scruples. Hello, 7th Officer Donaldson, and if it isn't Onyango as well, I see the two of you together quite often. You've become thick as thieves, haven't you? We're close, Captain, but you have to be careful when using the word thief to refer to a black man. Of course. My apologies, Onyango. Now, Mr. Donaldson, there was an issue I wanted to bring to your attention. Sure, what's up? Does it have to do with what happened in the Turkish bath? I assure you that we're looking into it. No, it has to do with some reports we've gotten about you. Reports? What do you mean, Captain? I'm sure it's nothing, but there are rumors circulating that you have been, let's say, propositioning the female passengers. Me, uh, propositioning them? I have no idea what you're talking about, sir. I've been hard at work these past few days. That's the life of a seventh officer, after all. That was what I suspected, but I'll just remind you that an officer must always be on his best behavior, especially around women. Do I make myself clear? Very clear, Captain. I promise you that you'll hear nothing about this ever again. Very good. Good day, gentlemen. Fuck me. What are we going to do? I can't exactly get a white woman for you with the captain breathing down my neck. Yeah, we'll have to figure something out. I wonder who told him about the rumors. You think it was a passenger? 
No, it was probably another officer if I had to guess. I bet it was that fucking Murdoch. That guy is such a teacher's pet. Come on, let's ask him. If it's him and we get him to shut his mouth from here on out, we can get back to business. Hmm. It looks like we're in for a very calm evening. Boat boy, I need some information, and I need it now. Robert, at least try and act like a normal person. Oh, if it isn't Mr. Robertson and his handsome companion. Passengers really shouldn't be in the offices, but I think I can make an exception for a famous actor. What can I do for you? There's a man aboard this ship named Joe Biden. He's staying with some rich asshole named Reginald Todford III. They've changed rooms, and I need to know where the new ones are. Oh, this must be some more character work. How delightful to get a chance to flex my acting muscles. Let's see. What should I say? This isn't a game. Tell me where they are now. Oh, the stakes are high. Should I be frightened or assertive? Please just let me beat him, Lila. No, Robert. Officer Murdoch, this isn't part of the play. You see, Mr. Biden is a close friend of Robert's from, uh, university. They went to Oxford together, and he's just very excited to stop in and visit him. Oh, I see. Well, in that case, I must say that we're unfortunately not allowed to reveal the location of a passenger's cabin, especially that one. You see, Mr. Todford is a bit concerned. It's some security threat, I think. I don't really know the details. If he wants a security threat, I'll happily oblige. Robert, shut your mouth. Officer Murdoch, it's truly very important. I didn't want to say this before, but Robert is... He's... He's dying. It's some new disease. I don't know the name. Playing Sherlock Holmes is going to be his last role ever, and he desperately wants his best university friend, Mr. Biden, to see him in a performance one last time. Oh, goodness, Mr. Robertson. How could I have not seen the signs? You're clearly a man on the edge of death. How tragic. Still, I can't tell you the room number, but if you want me to pass along some tickets, I could certainly do that. How about you pass along a punch to the face? Robert, don't. Thank you, Officer Murdoch. We may take you up on that, but we must be going for now. Lila, let me do this. My bloodlust needs to be satisfied. Robert, you nutcase, come along. I've been thinking more about that teeth thing, and honestly, missing a few could be a good thing depending on how you look at it. Hey, buddy, watch where you're going. Whoa, baby, that's one hot mama. You have no idea who I am. Don't test me. No, it's you who has no idea who I am. My name is Frederick Trump. I uh, mean, it's 7th Officer Donaldson. And during my childhood back in Bavaria, I was the king of the slap fight. Robert, let's keep going. How are you today, my fine honey? I mean, how are you, miss? You are a miss, right? This guy isn't your husband? Ha, ah, she'd be lucky to be my wife. Back in England, I have a stout and sturdy woman who's already given birth to a son ten times stronger than anything she could push out. Fuck you, Robert, like I'd ever want to marry you in the first place. All I'm hearing is you're available, which means Trump go and do the thing or whatever. Really, Onyango? Her? You know, miss, I know practically everything about this ship. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? These guys are a pair of fucking weirdos. Yes, Robert. But what he said just gave me an idea. Sirs, we're looking for a passenger named Joe Biden. He's sailing with a Reginald Todford III, and it's desperately important we find them as soon as possible. You could help us, couldn't you? If you indeed know everything. Oh, uh, cabin assignments are a little... Hey, Trump, do you know anything about those guys? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're those two losers we ran into on deck as we were leaving Queenstown. They had to change rooms for some dumb reason. They told us about it at the officers' meeting. Wait, you know their new room? Tell me and I'll spare your life. Why should I tell an asshole like you anything? Oh, please, sir. I'd be ever so grateful. Please, Trump, tell them. This may be my only shot. Okay, but the lady has to do something with my friend. Very well, we'll meet tonight. Say, in the second-class library. Oh boy, it's really happening. Whatever, what's the room number? I'm pretty sure it's cabin B-63. Come along, Lila. We don't have a moment to spare. I really think we should talk about what happened in the Turkish bath. I already told you to forget about it. That's just a spy thing. Open up, Joe Biden. Your time is at an end. Mr. Josen, the German spy has caught us. What do we do? Don't worry. He may think he has me cornered, but I always get away. So you're the man who's after me? I must commend you. Thousands have tried before and none have ever gotten this close. Close? I got a lot more than close, Mr. Biden. I caught you. 
You're coming back to England with me, and when you do, you shall finally face justice. Yeah, I don't know about that. I think I'll pass. You'll pass? Sorry, but there's no choice here. Lila, guard the door. And there's no escape either. Oh, you're absolutely right. How could I have ever been so foolish? Well, if we're going back to London, I'll have to grab my umbrella. It's over here by the window. I'll be just one second. You're really concerned about getting wet when you're heading six feet under? What a ridiculous man you are. Well, the truth is there's no umbrella. Mr. Todford, I'm sorry that I have to do this. And mustache guy, Mr. Todford is innocent. I was holding him hostage, so just let him go. What on earth are you talking about? Well, I wish I could stay and explain, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. Sucks to suck, loser. No, stop! God fucking damn it! Oh, so that was what the rope and saw were for. You truly are a great spy, Mr. Josen. The Germans never stood a chance. Robert, what's the matter? The bastard was a step ahead of me. I'm going after him. Watch that dumbass. If Biden gets away, we'll use him as leverage. I thought you weren't a spy, pretty lady. What are you blathering on about? Ugh, it's no matter. Come along. I need to get you out of here before Robert comes back. Wait, you're going to help me escape? But why? Who are you? Can I smell your hair? What? Gosh, it's one idiot after another today. Yes, if you stop asking questions and come along, I'll help you. Just a few more feet and ah! Uh. No, it can't be. He got away. No matter. I found you once, Joe Biden, and I will find you again. While I may have won the battle, the war was long from over, and Robert was more motivated than ever. However, as the hours moved along, all of us found ourselves closer and closer to the tragic event that would make all our concerns seem trivial by comparison. Wow, Joe, I can't believe you climbed up the side of the Titanic. That's sick as hell. You don't seriously believe that actually happened, do you, Donald? I don't see why it couldn't have. Donald, Joe is a frail old man. Even 110 years ago, he was still 200 million years old. I don't know. Maybe that last 110 years was really what took the pep out of his step. Wow, you're so gullible. What about you, Todd? Did that seem like your ancestor? Hmm, I can't say. But I don't think I have an Indian ancestor. What? No, I'm not talking about Haresh. I'm talking about Reginald Todford III. He's a dead ringer for you. Barrio, Reginald Todford III was a millionaire. While I often eat the packaging that food comes in in order to get extra calories. Well, uh, yeah, that's kind of the point I'm making. It has to be made up, right? Barack, how many times do I have to tell you this really happened? Joe, forget about negative Nancy here and continue with the story. I can't wait to see what happens next. All right, here we go. <laughs>